It's 7 p.m. This is News 360 from the News app here at Adesanwe in Accra. I am Isa Moni. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Top of the bulletin this evening. News 360 Headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. And Piccadilly Biscuits. My Life Insurance. Government proposes increase in energy sector levy and communication service tax. U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi lauds Ghana's democratic credentials and contribution towards global peace and security. Also, Anglo Gold Ashanti reports agitating retrenched workers to police for forging purported negotiation agreement. In business, Fresh chopped fruit and juice producers, blue skies to expand local markets. On the international front, Sudan's main protest group demands ruling military council immediately agree to final transition deal after at least five people were killed in El Obeid. We have all the details, including sports and entertainment, coming up this hour. Stay with us. To our very first story, government is seeking approval for 6.3 billion CDs as it pushes for a media review of its fiscal policy. Now, Finance Minister Ken Ofriata addressed in Parliament proposed an increase in some taxes and an abolition of others government introduced in the last budget. He walks in with his usual brown briefcase, sounding biblical. He was emphatic on what exactly he wanted. Fiscal measures are specifically geared towards improving domestic revenue mobilization, reining in expenditures, as well as addressing some critical protracted structural issues in the energy sector. A glimmer of hope for those who protested the imposition of luxury vehicle tax. Government in 2018 introduced a luxury vehicles levy to raise revenue. We have noted suggestions from the general public on the implementation of this tax. And Mr. Speaker, as a listening government, we are proposing to the House the withdrawal of the luxury tax levy. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, continue to improve compliance, expand the tax nets, and explore other innovative sources of raising revenue. Furthermore, the telcos might be revising their notes as government is pushing for an increment in the communications service tax. The government proposes to increase the tax to 9% to develop the foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem in the country from 6%. This will comprise, among others, putting in systems to identify and combat cybercrime, protect users of information, technology, and combat money laundering and other financial crimes. The increase will not be earmarked, however. The sharing ratio will be adjusted in such a manner that the National Youth Employment Program continue to receive the same proportion as they are currently receiving. With all this, the government is pushing for an additional fund to spend. I beg to move that this House consider and approve an amount of six billion three hundred and seventy million three hundred and fifty five nine hundred and twenty five point eighty two Ghana cities as supplementary estimates to original appropriation of seventy eight million billion seven hundred and seventy one billion eight hundred and thirty three. 600,602.82 Ghana cities to bring the revised total appropriation to 85,142,189,000 Ghana cities. While this review of the fiscal policy for 2019 has been referred to the Finance Committee for a report and subsequent debate on the floor before the House rises this week, the Minister of Finance is certain the country is on the right path to recovery. 
government has proposed an upward adjustment in the energy sector levy and the communication service tax by the withdrawal of the luxury vehicle tax. These proposals, according to the finance minister, have become necessary to provide space for revenue generation and the creation of a stable business environment. The 2019 budget review presented by the finance minister introduced new reviews and adjustments. Topical amongst them is the withdrawal of the luxury vehicle tax, where vehicles with engine capacities of 3 to 3.5 litres paid an annual tax of 1,000 Ghana cities. Those with engine capacities of 3.6 to 4 litres pay 1,500 cities annually, while 4.1 litres and above paid an annual tax of 2,000 Ghana cities. The others are the upward adjustment of the energy sector levy from 17 percent to 21 percent and the communication service tax from six to nine percent government says these reviews have become necessary due to the depreciation of the city revenue shortfalls high expenditure energy sector under generation and lower production in the oil and gas sector government is proposing an upward adjustment in the road fund levy the energy debt recovery levy and the price stabilization and recovery levy to bring the ratios close to 21% to help bridge the financing requirements. The government proposes to increase the tax to 9% to develop the foundation for the creation of a viable technology ecosystem in the country from 6%. We have noted suggestions from the general public on the implementation of this tax, and Mr. Speaker, as a listening government, we are proposing to the House the withdrawal of the luxury tax levy. Finance Minister Ken Ofriata also requested the approval of in excess of an additional 6 billion cities to continue with the project in the second half of 2019, bringing the total appropriation to in excess of 85 billion cities compared to the original appropriation in excess of 78 billion cities. Government is therefore requesting honorable members to consider and approve an amount of six billion three hundred and seventy million three hundred and fifty five thousand nine hundred and twenty five point eight two million cities as supplementary estimates to the original appropriation of seventy eight billion seventy seven seven hundred and seventy one million eight hundred and thirty three million six hundred and two point four million to bring the revised total appropriation for the 2019 fiscal year to 85.1 billion Ghana cities. Well, GDP growth rate has been revised from 7.6% to 7.1%. The fiscal framework has also been recalibrated to 4.5% of GDP compared to the original 4.2%. Meanwhile, some stakeholders in the energy sector have been reacting to the proposal by the finance minister to review the current power purchases agreement. I get surprised. Government promoting one district, one factory, and complaining that we have excess capacity, that tells you that they are unable to perform. We have over 216 districts. If they had actually implemented the one district, one factory, by now, this excess capacity wouldn't have been an issue for us. If your household, you consume a bag of rice a month, and then you go to purchase 10 bags of rice, and you expect that your family will consume the excess nine bags, how is that prudent management? So you do not, you do not procure, for some obvious reasons, you do not procure in excess of what the country needs, and expect to be, expect expect utilization of the that is why it is excess there is capacity there is an understanding to which the economy households industries will consume together that is what you plan for and i have been worrying on this ever and i'm happy today that the minister has clearly made it to the people of ghana that that take or pay is going to be changed to take and pay and that is going to save us if you listen to the minister clearly, he's also saved about 2.5 billion. So it has been safe, safe, safe. Now the argument is that 
our installed capacity is almost double uh, our peak demand and it's worrying that is why government has is proposing tell, tell that we I make tell, it tell government that i said that's baloney you know this is a government that has come in they check the growth rate a, the manufacturing sector is basically gone down the drain the only growth we hear in this economy is oil and it's oil because the ndc government led an oil industry to basically produce three major fields Jubilee 10 and Sankofa. We have given Nana Akufuadu in three years almost seven billion. The NDC government in eight years could even get three billion. I think um, what we witnessed today uh, is a typical case of um, uh, a government uh, reaching a moment where they literally want to tell the people of Ghana that we now have realized that talk is indeed cheap. Really, that's the, in summary, that's what it is today. That's a government that clearly have realized that um, credibility does not matter anymore. Consistency doesn't matter anymore. Uh, 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 being able to speak and keep your promise doesn't matter anymore. Uh, this is the same group of people that made it uh, uh, clear in this country that taxation is actually a lazy man's approach to governing. And today what you have is basically going going back on those same words and coming to impose taxes on the same people that they claimed they were coming to reduce tax upon. Um, I would say it's a sad day. It's a sad day for the country. Now, U.S. House of Representatives Speaker Nancy Pelosi has lauded Ghana's democratic credentials and her contributions to global peace and security. The Speaker, who is leading members of the United States Congressional Black Caucus to Ghana, called on President Tikufado at the Jubilee House. The astute United States House Speaker, together with the 12th member Congressional Black Caucus, is in the country for a five-day visit. The congressional delegation to the presidency also included House Majority Whip James Clyburn. The congressman said the future of the relationship between Ghana and the United States largely hinges on mutual respect. Fundamental to our being here today is to have a relationship with this great country, a country that came into being my senior year of high school and first year of college. Uh, and we on my college campus look to Ghana with such admiration and such respect. We still hold that today. And we want to come today to say to you how much we appreciate that relationship and we want it to go forward in such a way House Speaker Nancy Pelosi praised Ghana for a contribution towards global security. Very proud of the blessing of many Ghanaian Americans, uh, how it's based on security, and we compliment you on the strength of, of uh, Ghana in this continent, being an exporter of security and peacekeepers, uh, having peacekeepers uh, on the continent and elsewhere, and to, uh, based on our history, and that is the solemn mission we're on, the 400th uh, observance, and based on our future, future of freedom and justice. President Ikofado said Ghana will continue to work towards strengthening relations with the United States. We are we're looking for a new, more progressive agenda between us, which is an agenda where Ghanaian enterprises and American enterprises will get together to promote the economic uh, uh, relations between our two countries, whereby investment by American companies here, yeah, why not? Investments by Ghanaian companies in the, in the American economy become the order of the day. And then we lessen dependence on uh, the, the generosity of American taxpayers towards our development. We think it's a, a healthier and more productive relationship that will be developed between our two countries. The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is expected to address Ghana's parliament on Wednesday. The delegation is also expected to visit the Cape Coast and Alibina castles. Meanwhile, Nancy Pelosi has laid a wreath at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park on behalf of the government and people of the United States. 
The U.S. congressional delegation was welcomed by the director of the Memorial Park, Haji Abubakar Issa Osman. After the brief interaction and photo taking, they proceeded into the mausoleum, which houses the remains of Ghana's first president, Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. She also visited the museum, where his personal effects and publications are kept. Angul Godashanti says it has reported an aggrieved group of retrenched workers to the police for forging a purported negotiation agreement. The former employees in their protest at the company's head office in Accra are demanding an outstanding compensation for the layoff in 2013. But the company, in a statement, has indicated that all entitlements due the retrenched employees were fully paid in accordance with the collective agreement and all applicable laws. According to the protesting workers, they were informed in October 2013 by the mining company that their services were no longer required. There was, thereafter, an agreement that the affected workers would be paid 25% of the annual basic salary and be compensated for the loss of employment. According to the workers, they are yet to be paid that special compensation. They made an agreement and it was in the agreement. So far, that is the only thing left in the agreement they have not uh, satisfied. And so we have approached them countless times, met with them at the National Labor Department, at the Obosi Municipal Assembly, but still they don't want to give us the money. The lady of workers served notice not to leave the premises until their issues were addressed. Not until the CEO of the Angogo Rachante, Kevin Daniski, Rise a letter himself and signs and brings us the copy of that letter today. No, 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 no. We will not leave the place. Meanwhile, Anglo Gold Ashanti has expressed dissatisfaction over the protests, indicating that all entitlements due to retrenched employees were fully paid in accordance with the collective agreement and all applicable laws. A statement issued and jointly signed by Head of Legal and Corporate Affairs Juliet Manteau Cutting and Manager of Sustainability Department Edmond Odro AJ noted the claims by the former employee employees were unfounded. The company said it has reported their grief group to the police for forging the purported negotiation agreement. The former employees who were rendered redundant between 2013 and 2014 claimed that about 4,000 affected ex-workers are owed between $60,000 and $125,000. Anglo Gold Ashanti Limited is a global gold mining company formed in 2004 following the merger of Anglo Gold and the Ashanti Goldfields Corporation. In some more stories, an Accra High Court has granted bail in a sum of 200,000 cities each with two sureties to four of the eight accused persons standing trial for the kidnapping of two Canadians in Kumase. As part of the bail condition, one of the sureties must be justified. Following a bail application by their lawyers, presiding judge Justice George Buedi granted a four bail indicating Abdul Nasiri, Seydou Abukari, a.k.a. Mba, Safianu Abukari, and Abdul Rahman Suleiman, a.k.a. Wafa, must report to the Kumasi Central Police Station every Monday. The rest of the accused persons are Samson Agalo, a.k.a. Romeo, Elvis Ejoiwi, Jeff Omasa and Yusif Yakubu. They have been accused of playing various roles in the kidnapping of Lauren Patricia Catherine Tilly and Billy Jordan Chili, who were in Kumasi to participate in a youth program on June 4. All the accused persons have been charged with two counts of conspiracy to kidnap, while Agalo Ejoi, Omasa and Yakubu have been charged additionally with two counts of kidnapping. Hearing continues on August 12. At your news 360 and business news is next after the break. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. It's now time for business and government intends to convert all take or pay power generation contracts to take and pay agreement. The finance minister, Ken Ufriata, in his mid-year budget revealed that the country is paying 2.5 billion CDs annually for power generation capacity it does not require. 
the country has installed power generation capacity of 5,083 megawatts, dependable capacity of 4,593 megawatts, and peak demand of around 2,700 megawatts, according to the Energy Commission. According to the Finance Minister, 2,300 megawatts of the installed capacity has been contracted on a pay-or-take basis. On average, less than 40% of the contracted take-or-pay capacity is used, meaning the country is paying for the remaining 60% of excess capacity, which is not consumed. The finance minister referred to the take-or-pay arrangement as wasteful expenditures in the energy sector, which are one of the main causes of increases in the end-user electricity tariffs. These tariffs makes Ghana uncompetitive for manufacturing that's holding back our industrialization and job creation agenda. What is more, these wasteful payments are putting pressure on our foreign currency reserves and on the exchange rate. We cannot allow this situation to continue. There is no doubt that the situation in the energy sector is shocking the economy and creating a state of emergency. And indeed, as in the case of what we have done in the financial sector, we must respond with the agency and boldness dictated by the situation. Government has therefore resolved to sanitize the sector. To convert all take or pay contracts to take and pay contracts. Accordingly, starting August 1st, 2019, government is to pay for energy and gas that we actually consume. All take or pay contracts will be renegotiated to convert to take and pay for both PPAs and gas supply agreements. Government will seek, of course, Mr. Speaker, parliamentary ratification where appropriate. Government is proposing an upward adjustment in the road fund levy, the energy debt recovery levy, and the price stabilization and recovery levy to bring the ratios close to 21% to help break the financing requirement. In addition, government is also taking steps to relocate the car power ship to Takrade to immediately utilize Sankofa gas, increase power export by extending the grid to other West African countries, streamline management of street lighting to ensure accountability and transparency in billing and payments. Global Fresh Chop Fruit and Juice Company Blue Skies intends to expand its Ghanaian market hold. The company currently serves a paltry 5% of its products on the Ghanaian market. These were revealed when a delegation for Media General Group called on management of the fresh fruits producing giant at Doblo near Insawam in the eastern region. The visit by Media General Group, led by the group CEO Beatrice Ajiman, to Blue Skies Company was to strengthen business ties. She expressed confidence the two unique market leaders in their various fields could build a stronger partnership. We generate original content from our news. We do our own productions with respect to documentaries. I know you have a number of documentaries, but it's important that we do uh, new ones for you to tell the story. We are willing to partner you. You should on TV3. Ghana's Most Beautiful is starting. Um, we are launching it on the 11th of August. That's our flagship. I think you should come on board. Founder of Blue Skies, Anthony Pyle, noted the visit by the Media General Group was timely as the company focuses its energy on the local market. Based on the idea that we have a family within each of those families, so people can look to local people to run things as they know. And that way you're respectful of the culture, mm -hmm. uh, you understand the, the need and demands of the communities mm -hmm. and of course the important thing is they know actually what they need to understand and learn in order to make it a profitable enterprise. Blue Skies has been producing fresh fruits products since 1998, exporting premium quality freshly cut fruit to supermarkets in Europe before eventually diversifying to supply the local market with freshly squeezed 100% natural juice. The company, an industry leader and a major employer in the private sector with over 6,000 workers, employs the state-of-art technology in its processes.
Now, GB Foods has launched Genomax onto the Ghanaian market. The new products made from local ingredients are fortified with nutrients. Gino is a well-established brand in Ghana, producing a wide range of quality products. The new product, Gino Max, is made up of pepper, spices, shrimps, with a distinctive package of red and green. Gino Max comes in three flavors, that is Gino Max shrimp and spices, Gino Max shrimp, pepper, and Gino Max shrimp flavors to suit the taste of every Ghanaian. The director of marketing, Ashok Minha, explained what makes Genomax different from other brands. To understand the taste of the Ghanaian dishes, we already have tomato. We know that tomato is playing a very important role in the soups and the stews and the jollof. But then with these cubes, it is going to also help us in getting the taste and the aroma. How we are going to differentiate ourselves? Very clear. First of all, we have a bigger tablet, which is 12 grams. And the most important thing is obia wona taste. We have a cube for every specific taste. The marketing manager, Ekuya Obri Yabwa, recommended the product to every Ghanaian consumer. Gino is associated with quality. We will not just bring anything in the market for people to put in their food. So we also always ensure that we've tested and tested, tried and tested to make sure it is the best product for all our consumers. So whatever dish you cook in this country, this is the best product for you. And trust me, once you try the product, you will go back and try more and more and more. Taste. Gino Marks, you know Obia when it tastes. Gino truly cares. And that's it for business this evening. News 360 returns after this. Please stay. And entertainment tonight, the chairman of the Ghana Music Rights Organization, Gamru, Rex Omar, has alleged the Carlos Sechi KK Kabobo administration misused funds in excess of 2 million Ghana cities. Rex Omar disclosed the board of Gamru is resolute in their quest to retrieve the money, authorized its lawyers to reclaim all misappropriated funds. The chairman then also turned himself the chief executive. So he was supporting to himself. He also became the manager, the accountant, and everything. For three years, they didn't account to anybody. The Carlos Sechi KK Kabobo administration was in charge of the collection society between 2012 and 2014. Kojo and his team took over the leadership baton and handed over to Rex Omar after Kojo declined to contest in open election in 2017. The chairman of the society, Rex Omar, disclosed an audit conducted showed Gamro's funds was dissipated without due process as payments were made without any supporting documents. The amount of 55 thousand was taken from Gamro's account to purchase Toyota Sequoia without any knowledge or approval of then board. Another 51,650 CDs of Gamro's money was taken from the account. They said they were going to use to do ID card for Gamro members. The audit says that they have squandered over 2.1 million Ghana CDs of Gamro's money. Unaccounted for. He noted the board will do everything within its means to retrieve the misused funds. We as Gamro, we have already started our civil action against the people, especially the signatories, Carlos Sechi, Keke Kabobo, and rest. But we're also asking Attorney General to start a, a criminal prosecution because we cannot accept people just to go and squander people's money and then turn around creating confusion in the industry. Now, American rapper and business mogul Jay-Z, born Sean Corikata, is a number one fan of Beyonce and Shatawale's song already. In a video that has gone viral, the Carter family is seen jamming to the song, which features the Ghanaian hit maker. We gather the scene was captured at the 21st birthday party of Jay-Z's niece, Tiana Carter. Fans believe the video is a big endorsement of Shatawale's brand and are positive it will help project him internationally.
our entertainment news hip like musician and rapper Baktai, known for his early 2004 hit Yempie, has passed on. Baktai, age 39, gave up the ghost at the Ridge Hospital on Sunday, July 28, after weeks of battling ill health. Bon Echo Zagla hit the limelight in the early 2000s following the release of his hit song, Yempie, which featured Samini. Baktai is also remembered for his collaboration with Miss Bell on the song Awosumi. Right, you're watching News 360 live from the News app here in Accra. And uh, we have some results from the West African Examinations Council. And uh, it is uh, a statement from the head of the national office. And um, we'll bring you more details on that on News at 10 later on. But we'd just like you to know that we have that information we're going through currently. And uh, is the result of the WASI. And there'll be more details on that on news at 10. It's also online. You can check it up on the WAEC uh, website. And that's it for News 360 this evening. There's more news on 3news.com. I am Aisha Yakubu. And I'm Issa Morning. There'll be more updates on 3news.com. Have a wonderful evening.